Breakwater takes place in a near future dystopic Los Angeles. Attention Breakwater refugees, a severe hurricane warning is in effect. The storm is a character that's ever present and is always coming at you. I was really excited that it was in the future. All the positive tech, the themes that were being discussed. The climate change, climate ravaged world has created a global melting pot of refugees. Living in a flooded city on the other side of a seawall. And we follow one of those refugees as she pulls together a band of rebels. And on the eve of the biggest storm in a decade has to find a way to get her and her friends across the wall safety. Take two, a mark. We had known Zach Crayley, the creator and showrunner. Uh, we worked with him together on Heroes. So he was our first call when we got the RFP. They knew that Snapchat was looking for something climate change related. There was some synergy there that I had been already thinking about this concept. Flesh that pitch out a little bit and Snapchat really responded to it. The Snapchat universe is full of people who have grown up with climate change. And so to tell a story that dramatized some of these things in really engaging ways for an audience that deeply cares about that, that felt like a duty to incite a spark of positive change. My daughters were born three years ago. Thinking about the world my children are gonna inherit, that's why I got excited about not only telling a story that I was passionate about, but being able to tell it to the audience that's gonna impact and matters the most too. If we are all trying to look out for each other and bring society together to work towards something better, change is possible and our optimism for the future could be real. Envisioning what this type of world would be was a really fun challenge. In a world outside of Los Angeles where there's a seawall and these people are just getting basically the trash that's coming out, what does that look like? There's a lot of thought about being waterproof or water repellent. What would probably last most likely in a waterlogged state would be synthetic fibers or plastics. We were making light fixtures out of plastic bottles. Not just recycling, really like trying to use and upcycle. I had the idea for Mai's home itself to be a lifeboat. That was a beautiful metaphor. Everything she has is made for the world, so it's heat reflective and waterproof. We wanted to make sure her costume felt authentic to her and was tactical. We tried to present both the dangers of technology, but then also that there's technology being developed to help the residents in breakwater. There's hope in that. So, this is your movement's headquarters. Small part of it. We get a glimpse into some of the positive green tech. You see the bladeless wind turbines as a source for power, water recapture systems. You see the seed bank to suggest they're making plans to be able to grow and harvest things in the future to sustain their community. But also these people are being surveilled and controlled. I did read through anti-surveillance masks, some goggles, some things that were protection, but also something that could alert them for the water level rises, or if there was a storm coming in. That was all threaded in throughout the costume. We had a lot of discussion about what year the show should take place for this level of climate change and this sea level rise, but we found the research to support that worst case scenario, you know, Santa Monica, Playa Vista definitely could very well be underwater in 20 years. We've literally taken the stories in the news, what is currently happening, and just extrapolated that and said, well, what's the logical conclusion of that? I've always been very passionate about protecting the environment. Having this be a theme within the show might inspire people to do more. Look, in a few hours, this whole place is gonna be underwater. This is the real forecast. If you stay here, you will die in the storm surge. Where are we supposed to go? 